What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. Kinda as I expected, a lot of you did like this scenario, and I'm really glad that that's the case because it seems like a really fun one to continue. In case you missed the last part, I suggest you check it out, but as a quick rundown, it's as the title says, Super Boo ended up turning good. In the last part, we more so focused on how that actually happened, but this time, it's more of the consequences of that. So, we'll be progressing a lot deeper into the story. For this part, I'm gonna try something different. Let's see if we can hit 3,500 likes, and once we hit that like goal, I'll continue the series with another part. Anyways, let's pick up from here. As everyone continues their training, Frieza is eventually revived. And while there is a chance that Frieza just continues his training like normal and comes to Earth, I'm not gonna do that here. Instead of just training for 4 months, Frieza would most likely be aware of the threat of Boo. Even with that 4 months of training, if he went to Earth right then, he'd still be screwed. Frieza hears that not only Beerus has visited Earth, but Boo is there too, and for some reason he hasn't destroyed everything yet. And while he's not too concerned about Beerus, Boo definitely piques his interest. He's on Earth, and now reawoken somehow, stronger than ever. As King Cold said, Frieza knows not to mess with Boo. But from what he remembers, Boo is kind of an airhead, at least that's what King Cold told him. But even with the tactical and intellectual advantage that Frieza has, he still needs some extra strength to solidify a win just in case Boo pulls something out that he didn't notice before. So, Frieza's not actually visiting Earth right now. He's gonna be training a little bit longer, which means we're actually going to the Universe 6 tournament first. All right, so how is the Universe 6 tournament gonna go? Well, the team is gonna actually be different this time. Naturally, Goku and Vegeta are in there, as well as Manaka, who serves as a motivator for them. As for the next two members, Boo is an obvious pick, and this time he's not gonna fail that test beforehand. He's more than smart enough to pass it. Another great option for them is Gohan. They were surprised to hear that he's continued his training, this time with Boo. And with such a great training partner, that means he's seeing some great gains. He actually retains any access to Super Saiyan forms and Ultimate, not that he's going to be using the Super Saiyan forms anyways. He hasn't been training for too long, so he is a bit rusty, but in terms of power, he's better than ever. And there is one key thing that he learned from Boo. Boo has noticed Gohan's cockiness, as he did take advantage of it beforehand. That's how he became good in the first place. He's experienced it firsthand, and it's a big flaw that Gohan had to work on. But now, he's not going to be getting too confident in fights. He knows his strength, and knows when to get serious. The tournament begins, and first up is Goku vs. Batamo. That goes like normal. Next, Goku vs. Frost. That also goes like normal. So, not too much change so far. Gohan goes up against Frost next. And instead of conceding like Piccolo did to allow Vegeta to fight, Gohan continues the battle. It'll be great to show off his full strength for once. Frost asks if Gohan's going to transform like Goku did, and he declines. He has his own form of power that he's going to show off. For the first time in a while, everyone gets to see Gohan using Ultimate again, coded in that same white aura. Frost is actually amazed by the power, and before he can even register what's happening, Gohan appears in front of him, delivering a single punch that sends a shockwave through the arena. Frost is immediately knocked unconscious. With a single hit, Gohan took him out, letting him progress to the next round. Mageta's up next, and Gohan's confident in his strength, but he realizes that it won't be enough. Mageta is basically impervious to any attack, except a mental one, and we've seen how cocky Gohan can get, so I'm sure he can come up with a good enough insult, even though he's not going to be cocky here. There's a certain insult he used against Boo that I'm sure will be enough to make Mageta cry, even if it is a bit harsh. Next, we have Kaba, and to be honest, this would be pretty weird for Gohan. I'm not entirely sure what he'd end up doing. It would be cool to see a Saiyan from another universe, but teaching Kaba Super Saiyan, I don't know if that would necessarily happen. Gohan's not really a teacher type. And even if he did want to teach Kaba Super Saiyan, whatever method he comes up with probably wouldn't be as effective as Vegeta's method. The two have a respectable fight, but of course, Gohan would be the victor here. Finally, we'd have Hit Up next. Now, Gohan's feeling good because he defeated a lot of people so far. But this Hit guy, he seems different. He's gonna tread lightly and not get too cocky. He paces himself, and it appears that Hit is way too powerful. Not to mention, he has some odd type of technique that Gohan can't get around. He realizes that he might take this battle as a loss, but he does take away one thing from it. He uses this time to study him, looking at all of his movements to see if there's any opening. And with this info, that'll actually help the next person, Boo. Gohan tells Boo everything that he saw, and he noticed that same slight movement that Goku did before when he fought Hit and Cannon. Boo will have to watch out for that and use that as an opportunity. Boo thanks Gohan, but says he won't need that info. He feels really confident for some reason. Boo steps into the ring and assumes a fighting stance. Hit does the same, ready to counter any attack from Boo. He expects Boo to launch towards him, but instead, He's suddenly hit by a beam that's launched from Boo's antenna. Hit has been turned into candy. Of course, he still retains his strength, but he's just confused by the whole thing. And while he tries to figure out what just happened, Boo picks him up, tossing him out of the rim. The piece of candy hits the ground as it turns back into Hit. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Was he just defeated by Boo? Everyone is just watching speechless. Boo actually laughs about it, glad to be the victor. Shampa storms into the arena saying that's not fit, angrily ready to erase Boo. 
but Boo says there was nothing in the rules that made that forbidden. Not to mention, Hit was kind of breaking galactic law by controlling time. So what's wrong with Boo using his own odd methods of fighting? The ref allows it, as Beerus cheers on. With this odd and unexpected tactic, Boo won, and everyone's pretty much speechless. Boo wanted to have a good fight, but Hit's tactics would have clearly made it unfair, so he wanted to take the easy way out. With the universe at stake and how easily Hit defeated Gohan, he didn't want to take any chances. He can't imagine what Shampa wanted to wish for, but it probably would have been bad. So that went pretty well, and nothing really changes. As a gift, Beerus wishes for Earth and Universe 6 to be restored, and life on Earth returns to normal, until an unexpected visitor arrives. Actually, many visitors. The entire Frieza Force descends on Earth one day. Goku and Vegeta aren't present, but thankfully, Boo and Gohan are there, as well as every other fighter on Earth. Boo's heard about Frieza from Gohan, but doesn't really know too much about him. But the two remember, many months ago, the sky randomly turned dark, meaning someone used the Dragon Balls. They assume that was when Frieza was revived, so this entire time, he was planning and possibly even training. Comparatively, Frieza on Namek would be way weaker than anyone here, but since he's been training, they don't know how strong he could be. The Frieza force itself is defeated pretty easily, but then Frieza himself steps up to fight. Boo refrains from absorbing him. That power that Frieza has could be useful and it would end the fight pretty quickly, but if he absorbs Frieza, then that influence may hurt him, causing him to be evil and kill everyone on Earth once again. Plus, where's the fun in that? He could also turn Frieza into candy, but he doesn't really need to do that like he did with Hit. As far as he knows, Frieza doesn't have any odd abilities, just pure strength. If he needs to do that, he will, but for now, he's just gonna gauge his power and fight. Frieza's obviously surprised to see Boo here. And what's worse, he's wearing the same outfit that Goku did. This clearly tells Frieza that Boo is good now, and has an alliance with those monkeys. But Frieza's pretty confident. With his new strength, he should be enough to take on Boo. Little does he know though, this isn't the same Boo that he was told about by King Cold. This Boo has been training, a lot, and he's a lot stronger from the get-go. Not to mention, way smarter. The two begin fighting, and in Frieza's first form, he's completely outclassed, but he's not too concerned. This was pretty much expected. He goes into his final form, and this gives Boo more of a challenge, but Boo's still not at his full power. A little bit more concerning, but nothing too bad. Frieza decides to finally show off his new power, going into his golden form. But something's different here. This isn't just golden Frieza, no. With all the extra time training, he's gotten a lot stronger, plus he's gotten control over the golden form. He even tells Boo and Gohan, he got this form a while ago, and he's been practicing it to get it perfect. He won't have any stamina issues here, because this is his true golden form. So besides the strength that the form gives him, and the extra strength from his extra training, he also has immaculate control over this form. He aims a death beam at Boo, piercing through the Majin's chest. He grins as he sees the hole in Boo, and Boo looks down surprised to see Frieza was powerful enough to do this. But he chuckles too. Did Frieza really think that would work? Boo regenerates, surprising Frieza. That injury did no damage. And this is news to Frieza. But who cares? Regeneration or not, Frieza will kill him. He'll destroy every cell if he needs to. The two clash with Gohan and everyone else watching. After all this training, this is the first real showcase of Boo's power, besides when he fought Beerus briefly before. Boo powers up more and more, as Frieza does the same to match him. But Boo has some amazing advantages. For one, his magic. He's able to create clones and illusions of himself, making it hard for Frieza to keep up. Frieza's able to destroy these illusions, finding the real Boo. But as he's about to attack this Boo, he's frozen. Boo struggles, but he's able to paralyze Frieza midair. While he holds Frieza in place, he splits himself into two, and Frieza watches helplessly as the other Boo attacks him. This is no illusion, it's actually a true clone. Frieza's powerful, but Boo's able to outmaneuver him pretty easily. For example, if Frieza launches a blast, Boo can either liquefy himself or curve his body around the blast so it doesn't hit him. This is a faster and safer way of dodging the attacks. Angrily, Frieza begins launching a bunch of death beams, and this actually catches Boo off guard a bit. He ends up looking like Swiss cheese with all these holes in him, and Frieza sees that it's working. Boo regenerates quickly as he sees more death beams launched towards him, but this time, he copies Frieza's attacks, countering with his own death beams. In terms of power, the two are a pretty good match for each other, but Boo does slightly outclass Frieza in terms of power. Plus, he heavily outclasses Frieza in terms of abilities and tactics. Frieza realizes he has no hope of winning. He didn't even get to fight those two monkeys he wanted to kill. So angrily, he jumps up in the air, quickly charging a death ball that he launches towards Earth. This caught Boo off guard once again, but Gohan's able to defend against it. Powering up into ultimate, he launches a Kamehameha, pushing Frieza's attack back towards the Emperor. Frieza tries to push it back, launching attacks towards it to push it downwards. But then, Boo joins in with his own blast. The two push the death ball back towards Frieza, and it hits the Emperor, heavily injuring him, but not killing him. As the blast dissipates, they see Frieza standing there, burned, bruised, bloodied, and whatever B-words can describe him. One last time, he weakly lifts up his fingers, pointing towards Gohan launching a death beam. 
Gohan slaps it away into a nearby mountain, causing a giant explosion. Frieza then feels someone tap his shoulder. He looks behind him and sees Boo standing there smiling. He splits himself into two as one of those clones grabs Frieza, holding him in place. He steps out of the way as Gohan launches one last blast, killing Frieza and erasing that clone of Boo. Boo descends as the two high five. That was some great real world experience, and it shows that those on Earth can handle themselves. So everything's going pretty well, right? Well, at least in this timeline. In a timeline where everything went pretty much the same, a certain Kai got to see the Universe 6 tournament on God 2. And while no one truly showed off any godly powers, there is one person that interested him, that being Boo. Zamas has been pretty mad at mortals for a while now, not to mention the whole thing with time travel that pissed him off. He's been considering a plan for a while but wasn't too sure about it, but now he sees the perfect way to actually go through with it. He needed some strength and he sees the perfect vessel for that. So like normal, the Zamasu in that timeline goes to get the Super Dragon Balls. On Earth in this timeline, Gohan and Boo are training, when suddenly, Boo changes. Gohan thinks this is some sort of prank from Boo, knowing that he can change his appearance, but Boo's just confused. He's green now and looks like a Supreme Kai. And then Gohan realizes that this is no joke, as then, Boo appears in front of him, actually being Zamasu. Zamasu, in Boo's body, lifts both hands up, launching blasts that both kill Boo and Gohan. He could have absorbed them and used their power, but Zamasu actually isn't aware of that. He probably wouldn't know that much about Boo at this point. And the thing is, even if he was aware of absorption, that would probably be a bad thing. In this scenario, we've seen how Boo's absorption actually influenced his personality. And for example, if Zamasu and Boo's body actually ended up absorbing Gohan, that may have made him not as evil. And you know what? Now that I think about it, I shouldn't be calling him Zamasu. This is now Boo Black. He gets that name from Trunks. Because, just like normal, he goes to that timeline, teaming up with that Zamasu there who becomes immortal. The two cause havoc, and all seems hopeless. Future Bulma even dies, and Mai seemingly does too. Trunks can't face him head on, so he has one option. He escapes to the past. There's one thing that confuses him though. The person that fighting him seemed to be Majin Buu. But that's the thing, he thought he prevented Buu from being released in this timeline. Shin told Trunks enough about Buu for him to know this. Not to mention, he had the Majin symbol on his belt. But something doesn't quite add up. He clearly remembers Boo's egg was disposed of, and something about Boo's outfit throws him off. Again, he doesn't know what Boo actually looked like, so that might be normal. But he had some ring on, as well as an earring that looked very similar to the ones that Shin and Kabito had, and the energy coming from Boo, to describe it in the simplest terms. While not being able to sense the godly side of Boo's power, there's a slight hint, a very, very slight hint, of a power that Trunks found very familiar. He tries to put his finger on it, and then he realizes. He senses the four people that were in Boo before. He obviously doesn't recognize Goten, but the other three he could tell. He senses Gohan from the past, Piccolo from the past, and the eeriest part of all, himself. He can't wrap his head around this. Is it truly Boo, or is it someone completely different? Trunks ponders this, trying to figure out the riddle, as he barely escapes back into the past. He arrives at Calvin's Corp, greeted by Bulma, Vegeta, and Goku. He explains everything, and they're surprised to hear that Majin Boo is there, especially with how Trunks described his look. Two more friends then arrive. Gohan arrives at Capsule Corp, and Trunks is surprised to see his new power and obviously glad that he's here. But then someone else teleports in, making Trunks' stomach drop. It's Boo. He's immediately on guard, ready to attack, thinking that this is the Boo from his timeline that somehow followed them there. He powers up into Super Saiyan 2, drawing his sword and flying right towards him. Boo was off guard and didn't expect this, and he sliced in half. But he regenerates as everyone tries to get Trunks to stop attacking. He's confused why, but they all explain. Apparently, this is Boo, but in this timeline he is good. It was a very complicated process, but they explained how it happened. And that's why it doesn't really make sense to them, because as Trunks described it, he looked exactly like the Boo here, except for the fact that his clothes were black, he had an earring and a ring. They're trying to figure out what would have happened if he stopped Boo from being revived in that timeline. How is he there and why does he look like this Boo? He should be fat and also pretty dumb. As they all try to figure this out, they then get an answer right in front of them. A portal opens in the sky and coming through the portal is Boo Black. Boo Black looks down destroying Trunks' time machine, and he looks over to see the actual Majin Buu standing over there. The two make eye contact, and this is where we'll leave off for now. So, what did you guys think about this part? What do you think will happen with Boo Black in the next part? And how do you think things will go for Trunks this time around? Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like. And let's try to hit that like goal from the beginning of the video so we can get another part of the series. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? As well as hitting the bell icon to get notified about any future parts of this what if, or any other videos that I upload on my channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.